Welcome to another episode of 30 Minutes with DailyStraits.com. I am your host, June Rumley. And joining us today is Paul Locke of the AXX listed Pan Asia Metals. Our discussion today is going to revolve around the fascinating world of green mobility and the future of electric vehicles. So, hi, Paul. It's a real pleasure to meet you. And I, how are you to, doing today from I, beautiful Singapore? Is that where you are? No, I'm in Sydney. Hi, June. It's also a pleasure to meet you. Uh, are you in Sydney? Yes, I am. Oh, there there you go. So I'm having a beautiful day too. Awesome. All right, let's jump into our conversation. So can you provide me with an overview of uh, Pan Asia Metals and explain its unique position as the only publicly traded battery metals uh, company with lithium projects in uh, Southeast Asia? Uh, I sure can. So Pan Asia Metals is a company which is focused on uh, participating in electrification. So we're looking, uh, we develop opportunities to produce the raw materials and then uh, turn those raw materials into the essential battery chemicals, which will help electrification. So basically, they're the batteries which power electric vehicles. Our whole objective is to identify projects uh, which are tapped into uh, an energy grid with renewables on it. That could be hydro um, or solar, actually where our projects are in Southeast Asia and in South America, that's exactly the case. It's both solar and hydro. Uh, and to produce uh, a, a as clean and green product as possible. So all raw material production um, leaves a bit of a footprint but you can work hard to reduce that footprint as much as possible and possibly remove it altogether. Alrighty, uh, so what inspired you to transition a career from corporate advisory to embark on a journey of starting Pan Asia Metals? So what was the, um, why, why, why basically? <laughs> well, um, I reckon there, there is no pathway. You can never say, look, at some point I decided I'm going to do this. Um, you start doing things in life and, and opportunities come up and if you see a great opportunity, you need to seize the moment. But when I was in corporate advisory, I used to uh, bank projects, um, mining projects, and then advise uh, mining companies on project finance, uh, mergers and acquisitions, and then even uh, worked with private equity. Um, but I always felt that when I was talking to a company about their project, I wanted to be on that side of the table. Uh, I think it's more fun to be building something. So that was sort of the uh, the seed which uh, got me going. Um, and then I went out and took some risks. And uh, ultimately, we ended up with Pan Asia Metals. But it was <laughs> it was a long and twisty journey. Awesome. Oh, that's very good. Okay, so there is a growing demand for lithium um, to power electric vehicles. So Tesla. And you know, there's a lot of other coming, uh, other brands of uh, EVs coming in the market. So, how does Pam plan to revolutionize the EV industry and contribute towards the goal, the goals of green mobility? So, there is like, um, I mean, a shortage, right, coming up soon, sometime in 2025. So, basically, how do you guys, you know, how how does this work? Well, look. So, our company is all about, uh, in fact, our motto is exploring a better future, which means helping create a better future and contributing to that. No one company can do it all, although I must say Tesla was really the spark which got the EV revolution going. I think everyone agrees with that. Um, but our objective is to supply those specialty chemicals um, to the battery manufacturers who will supply a product to the um, EV, EV manufacturers. So uh, it's, it's pretty simple, uh, but an important part of the supply chain is identifying where these minerals are. So you were spot on when you said um, there's a potential shortage coming. There are many, many forecasts out there and they vary, um, uh, but they're all sort of similar. Uh, and, and the key statistics there is um, that uh, in 2022, there was about 700,000 tonnes of uh, lithium chemical uh, production. It's commonly referred to as LCE. Um, uh, that's in 2022. In 2030, 
it's nearly five times that, so over 3 million tonnes. And in 2040 and, uh, uh, 2035 and 2040, it's substantially more. So there's a lot of work to identify uh, the projects and the resources to supply that demand. I expect that the demand will be slightly satisfied with battery tech. So as batteries improve, they can hold more energy density um, and that will help demand. Uh, and also uh, recycling at some point, I expect in five to 10 years, recycling will be a big contributor to uh, battery production. So um, despite that fact that they might be a shortage, the answer to that would be recycling, right? Is that right? Well, um, to a degree, uh, there is definitely, uh, uh, when we talk about shortage, th th what will happen is, e is demand for electric vehicles is sort of a, a steady incline. You can see it right now. I think 14% of passenger vehicles purchased globally are EVs now. And that uh, and and demand is out is outpacing expectations, and what will happen with supply? Um, it'll sort of be a porpoise effect. It'll sort of oscillate into oversupply, undersupply um, to meet demand. Because what drives supply is the value of the underlying commodity, and also uh, the interest of investors to take risks. So when there's a hint of oversupply, you'll find that um, uh, project development will slow down a little bit and then under under supply and project development will speed up. This is quite common. Okay, no worries. So what's the, can you shed some light on the PAMS MOU, Memorandum of Understanding with uh, Win, Win ES? Uh, Win ES, yeah. yeah. It's a sister company of Vietnam's largest conglomerate, WinFast. So I, there was a, a story on Reuters, but it was very short and very brief. So basically what the, how does this partnership fit into the broader strategy of PAM? Well, uh, I think to be successful in this industry, um, you you want to bring on board knowledge partners. So if you look at, particularly in Asia, um, if you look at uh, the Korean, the Japanese, and a lot of Southeast Asian companies, um, they're successful because they've got good partnerships. It's very difficult for one company to do everything. So I mentioned Tesla before. It has a lot of partnerships with um, battery companies, Panasonic and, and so on. So um, VINES is a, a Vietnamese battery manufacturer. Uh, it manufactures batteries for hand tools, stationary storage and EVs. And its, its sister company is VINFAST and they're, uh, that recently listed on the NASDAQ. So uh, our objective um, under this MOU is to re reach a definitive agreement to supply battery chemicals to uh, VIN ES so that they can manufacture batteries and also possibly third parties. So uh, it's symbiotic, their demand will dr drive um, their requirements and that's what we plan to supply. But where VIN ES's um, factories are in, in North uh, Vietnam, South of Hanoi, they're very strategically placed to supply chemicals into Korea Japan and even even Southeast Asia. So where our, our project is planned to be is in a, uh, a deep sea port there. There's plenty of energy. Half of Vietnam's energy is supplied by renewables, mostly hydro. Um, so that's basically the strategy. Wow, that's great. So a lot of uh, a lot of uh, things to look forward to. So so also you have also the company has strategically positioned itself in Thailand, a hub of for auto production. So how does PAM intend to leverage this strategic location to support the EV supply chain? So are you looking at Southeast Asia as a hub to, um, to, to you know, to conquer first before going elsewhere? Uh, most definitely uh, for chemical production. So uh, if we look at Southeast Asia broadly, uh, and you, we can always go back to the tigers and the cubs. So back in the 70s and 80s, the tigers were... Uh, you know, companies in Hong Kong, Korea, Japan, and Taiwan. And um, as their manufacturing hubs uh, developed, they were outsourcing part, part of their manufacturing requirements into Southeast Asia. And part of that, what drove that were, were costs. But in that happening, there was a lot of skill transfer into Southeast Asia, in particularly into 
Vietnam, the Philippines, uh, Thailand, Malaysia, and Indonesia. So now we've got a second round of that dynamic happening, and we're starting to see a lot of Chinese, Korean, and Japanese uh, companies which are producing batteries and EVs move into Southeast Asia, even US companies. Ford is a big operator in uh, Thailand. They have a big manufacturing facility there and many other auto brands. So Thailand itself is the fourth largest auto producer in Southeast Asia and the la sorry, the fourth largest in Asia and the largest in Southeast Asia. So our strategy is essentially to be where the manufacturing is. Um, we're a big believer in being in a low cost environment because that drives uh, your economics uh, and profitability, obviously. But if you're not in a low cost environment, uh, you'll be outcompeted very quickly. Um, so it's essential to locate well. Our objective is to be in midstream chemicals to produce um, the chemicals which go into the batteries. But what's supplying that are pro our projects located in Thailand and uh, in South America, which we plan to deliver product into Asia with. Awesome. So given the global imperative to transition to millions of electric vehicles for achieving net zero emissions, right, what role does PAM envision itself playing in the meeting uh, of, you know, the demand for lithium? So basically, right, how are you, you know, going, are you going to position yourself as the main player? What, what are you looking at? Well, ultimately, every company's strategy is to be a main player. Um, uh, but our target is to be an essential component of midstream chemical manufacturing. So those essential chemicals which go into batteries, and we'll do that with partners. So we've got, relate. We, we talked about the MOU in Vietnam. We have an MOU in Thailand with a group called IRPC, which is connected some, to PTT, one of the largest chemical companies in Southeast Asia, and, and so on. Um, so we, we want to identify and put our foot on the raw materials coming out of mines. And we want to use that as our leverage into the midstream chemical part of the supply chain, where we become an essential part of, of that supplying the battery manufacturers. So for, um, you know, the global initiative to reduce carbon, to electrify requires a lot of players. We're all sort of heading in the same direction. And Pam wants to be a, a key component of that in midstream chemicals. So if I may ask you, this is a bit off tangent, what is your market share? Oh, well, it's quite small at the moment. Uh, and we, we've got to keep in mind that the market is rapidly evolving. Uh, so I mentioned that 2022 lithium production, uh, lithium chemical production is around 700,000 tonnes. We're actually developing our projects, so we're not participating in that. But 2030 chemical production is expected to be uh, between three and four million tonnes. That's about five times uplift, and that can't be supplied by the current producers. So there's going to be a lot of uh, companies which participate in raw material supply. And um, aside from our own raw materials, uh, we'd be looking to uh, partner or uh, offtake from those raw material chemical suppliers to process it. Okay, so what is the market share for you may share? Like if you say- oh, Well, I can't tell you that right now. Um, Oh, but my, my comments there were basically to say that there's a lot of growth in the market. There's opportunities for all players. Um, ultimately, I think if you have a market share in 2030 of 5 to 10%, you're doing very well. So uh, you are the only one who's publicly traded in AXX that's doing, uh, you know, batteries and stuff. But what about competitors? Like, you know, outside of AXX, are you, is there any? Uh, well, in, in Southeast Asia, there's only one lithium company with exploration and development projects, that's Pan Asia Metals. Mm -hmm. There are some companies which are seeking to be granted license to do the same. Maybe they'll get there, maybe not, I can't say that, uh, but we're, we are literally the only company there. And that positions us very strategically because for a lot of um, Southeast Asian chemical companies partnering with a company which is extracting in, uh, minerals locally, offers big advantages. And those advantages are that uh, you can see where it's coming from, transport costs are low, um, you can deal with problems more easily, and so on. Okay, so this is a, a question that I was very famous, I mean, for, for you know, a lot of people are, well, are into sustain sustainability these days. So what is PAM's 
sustainability efforts and how does the company plan to minimize its carbon footprint while producing essential battery minerals? Well, um, that all comes into your feasibility studies and where you plan to draw your energy from. So our projects are positioned uh, on energy grids where there's a substantial amount of hydro power um, going into the grid and also solar power. So that solves uh, that side. In your processing facilities, you generally pro produce a lot of heat. So you want to capture that heat and reuse it. And also um, you can look at various processes, uh, processes which use chemicals which are, uh, uh, are tougher or more toxic than other chemicals which are, are less toxic. So there's a balance and it's, it's finding what you can use which gives you the results you need without um, producing a negative input on the environment. So to answer your question directly, every aspect of our project we look at, we look at uh, what produces the greenest outcome, what's the lowest impact process that we can use and so on. And then part of this too is involving our communities. So uh, where we are, we want to bring our communities on board. Our view is that if our communities thrive, we'll thrive. So we're working together, we're sort of one family and that's a big big part of what we do. So our communities are a, will be will benefit in a big way from our projects and the idea is to bring them along with us and they can bring us along with them okay that's great so okay so so the company operates in various uh, regions sydney singapore thailand india and malaysia so basically tell us a bit about the company how many staff do you have and how does this this companies um you know this all these uh, regional offices work to uh, with each other are they marketing officers looking for new businesses or what? Actually, June, so the, the company's key projects are in Thailand and Chile. Um, so uh, particularly Chile is one of the largest lithium pr producing countries in the world. The company um, explores opportunities widely um, uh, and, the, and part of that is to secure future raw materials for processing but we don't actually operate in India or Malaysia or Australia. I just happen to live in Sydney. Um, on a, from a staffing perspective, most of our team is in Thailand. So we have a staff, including geologists, uh, administration and so on, of about 20. Um, but associated with that, uh, with those staff, um, are many contracting companies and casual staff um, for those short term requirements. In Chile, we're just starting up, so we have um, a, a very small staff, a skeleton staff, but we're building that team at the moment. But ultimately, when those projects get going, I expect the staff will be somewhere around 10 to 15. Now, when projects start, we are, um, are doing work on our feasibility in Vietnam, and um, the staffing requirements for a lithium chemical facility would be uh, in the vicinity of um, 200. Two to three hundred, and I expect that um, in Thailand, with a mine, uh, there'd be at least 100, 150 people there, and in chemical processing in Rayong, south of Bangkok, there'd be two hundred there. So, there, uh, in the short term, I can see a pathway to the company being a very substantial employer uh, where it operates. Awesome. So, could you tell me about details about Pam's projects or so lithium projects? Uh, I think such as the Royal Kit project uh, and the company's plan for expanding the global lithium resource through the Katatong project. Okay, so um, it's it's pronounced Rion Kit, but we've changed it to RK because because oh. no one can say Rion Kit. I don't even think I pronounce it properly. <laughs> so the Rion Kit project um, is located about 40 k's out of Pangna, and we call that our beachhead project. Uh, the reason for that is that project uh, was um, our, was the project in Asia which gave us a legitimate position in the lithium chemical supply chain and has enabled us to create or enter into uh, MOUs to create partnerships with some really fantastic companies, both in Thailand and Vietnam. So the Rionket project uh, is, uh, we're close to submitting mining license applications. We're close to um, completing a feasibility and that project, we expect to be producing somewhere between, say, 
um, so around 15, 15 to 20,000 tonnes of LCE, lithium chemicals, um, uh, per year, which would be processed in Bangkok. Uh, we do have satellite projects um, to uh, to complement production at the RK Lithium project. Uh, hence, uh, you mentioned the Katatong or the KT uh, Lithium project, and that's more longer term. That requires exploration. Okay. In in Chile, um, we spent about uh, ten months building a suite of um, lithium projects there. Um, they're located near the coast, um, near a city called Iquique uh, in northern Ch Chile. Uh, these projects have an area of around 1,600 square kilometres and it's seven individual prospects over a length of 290 kilometres. Uh, the key to these projects is they're all, they're all low altitude. They're located on the energy grid with hydropower and, and solar. They're located on the ma main uh, north-south highway, traveling through Chile up into Peru and into um, North America. Uh, and they're located near deep sea ports. So these are the most strategically located um, uh, lithium projects in South America. And they'll be a big contributor to PAM's future chemical production. Okay, great. So uh, finally, in what ways is PAM striving to become a respective uh, local company and how does it plan to develop and integrate supply chains that delivers cost-effective products to the line uh, iron battery market so basically right um what do you what is your future plans like you know for the next financial year i'm sure you're listed uh since you're listed in australia it's june, june. so yeah. uh whatever you can tell that's uh permissible under the you know, uh yeah, yeah, well, I can uh, answer that very easily. Uh, we're, we're quite open with our plans. So um, I think the first question was around community and sustainability. Um, in Thailand, our entire workforce is Thai. Uh, we have a Thai CEO there, uh, Kampon, and his team who are very good, and they've been working with... Uh, pan Asia has been operating there for many, many years. Our objective um is to build community so this is what i was talking about before is to be a, a big part of the in thailand where we operate a big part of the uh thai lithium ion battery supply chain and that's already happening um, we're very well known in the country we're well known by some of the big chemical companies and that's how we've entered into these mous for joint ventures uh in vietnam we'll replicate that um, so as we start moving there it'll be a a Vietnamese team there, uh, and the same in Chile. So we're, we're all about employing locally. On the question of economics, economics is largely driven by your cost environment. So uh, Southeast Asia has some of the lowest energy prices in the world. Um, the labour rates um, are some of the lowest, but it doesn't mean that the labour um, is uh, it, it, the labor's not being... Um, what am I trying to say? The labour is treated well. So in their environment, they're paid very well. Uh, and also some of the lowest construction costs. And that's how Pan-Asian metals can uh, ensure that it's always going to be competitive. Cost environment is the key driver to that. Okay. So just let me get, uh, just uh, uh, to understand this. So the company produces uh, lithium. It, that's the end product, right? That you sell to... Com uh, EV companies like Tesla, for example, uh, for them to use into their uh, to make batteries, right? Is that is that correct? The understanding. The, uh, the company is not producing chemicals at the moment. The company is in feasibility to build its uh, mining projects, and it's um, working with its MOU partners to build uh, lithium conversion facilities to take the output of the mines. That's called a lithium concentrate and convert that into lithium chemicals, and they will go into the battery supply chain in Thailand and Southeast Asia. Okay, so who would be the buyers for your... Uh... Um, it, it could be any battery producer. So there are several battery producers starting to set up in Thailand. Several of those are from China. There's um, uh, Korean and Japanese companies look at looking at Malaysia, Thailand, Indonesia, and Vietnam. So our customers would be uh, likely one or two of those, it would be, uh, be a strategic relationship 
um, where they can trust us as a as a consistent supplier and um, we can see their growth path um, which would allow us to grow too. Um, in Thailand there are over 20 auto companies uh, producing. Uh, BYD is building a factory there right now to produce EVs. Um, uh, Great Wall Motors, another Chinese company, is building a factory there to produce EVs. Mercedes is already producing its flagship EQS EV in Thailand. Um, my understanding is Ford and some of the Japanese companies are also setting up to produce EVs in Thailand. So it's actually a really big market. And when we look at Southeast Asia, we look at Southeast Asia as one of the most important um, uh, battery, uh, a lithium iron battery and EV ecosystems in the world. And the driver there is if we include India and China, the population is heading towards it's probably over 3.5 billion. Um, there's a huge middle class emerging. It is a low cost environment, so it's economically um, viable uh, and it's all contained. All, all of our inputs come from local uh, industry and our outputs go into local industry. So it makes a lot of sense. Alrighty, thank you so much for that. That wraps up our insightful conversation with Paul Locke of Pan Asia Metals. Thank you, Paul, for sharing your valuable insights on this podcast today. Thanks, June. It's been a real pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, listeners. If you've enjoyed this episode, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel, dailystraits.com. Thank you, and we look forward to having another wonderful guest on this show soon. Thank you. Bye.